Passionate Living, scheduled to air at this time, will be back next week so we can present a special big picture program that Passionate Living host Catherine Miller hosted with the former Executive Director of the Wellness Institute of Greater Buffalo and Healthy Communities 2030, Philip Haberstroh. Phil lost his brave battle with cancer, but will always be remembered as a champion for the people of Western New York. Everyone at WBBZ-TV extends our sympathies to his wife, Bonnie, his family, and many friends. Thank you for joining us today on this special edition of The Big Picture as a tribute to our hometown hero, Phil Haberstroh. I'm blessed to have known Phil since the mid-90s when we were both hometown health and wellness warriors in Western New York. The work that Phil has done over these last three decades in lifting the consciousness of Erie County in the realms of wellness is just immeasurable. He will be missed as the beautiful person that he was to all of us who knew him in this world and for the extraordinary work he did in Western New York. I want to send condolences to Phil's family and friends in the community. And we have a few more people today who would also like to share their condolences. So Phil, Phil Havistro, that goes back a long ways, back in the late 80s with Phil because I was playing football with him back with the Geminis. And uh, we be became really good friends back then. He taught me a lot of stuff because he was a little bit older than I was. I was being new to the whole thing in the football league. And uh, ever since then, I've uh, been very good friends with Phil up until his passing, and we will miss him considerably. I'm John DeShulo at WBBZ. Phil Habistro was the, one of the first people in Western New York to recognize that Buffalo is an all-America city, and he helped spearhead that campaign, and for that we're forever grateful. And I also remember a great event he chaired many years ago for the late Lou Billetier, owner of Chef's Restaurant, recognizing him. Uh, he had a great, great love for this community, and we have a great, great love that will remain for Phil Habistro, and our sympathies and our best to his family. Welcome to the big picture. I'm Katherine Miller, sitting in for Phil Arnaud, who is on assignment. One of my favorite areas of interest is health and wellness. For me, the wellness path began at the age of 12, when I worked each day after school at my mom's jewelry, health food, and psychic store in the 70s. I love the excitement of new products on our shelves and the possibility of healing someone with nothing more than the energy from our own hands. But I was born an open-minded skeptic. In other words, I was open to exploring new or unconventional ways of doing things. But I wanted to see evidence and results. To some extent, that put me at odds with the world of health and wellness in my own mind as I lumped it all in with the psychic healing realms of tarot cards and readings and energy healing, which I had held some judgment about. By the time I hit college, I was starving for the mainstream, and I ended up with a five-year biology degree. What stunned me was a strange phenomenon that I hadn't expected. Many of the seemingly fringe beliefs that I was raised with were actually supported by scientific study. They just spoke different languages, but oftentimes were saying the very same thing. The unique merging of these two views provided a logical explanation for many of the integrative healing therapies I'd seen growing up. This led me to get even more involved in this intriguing world of wellness. So I founded a magazine called Holistic Health Journal, which boasted a review board of well-known MDs and authors such as Deepak Chopra, Bernie Siegel, Hyla Cass, and many more. It started right here in Western New York. And eventually it grew into a widely respected publication found in every major book chain in the U.S. and Canada. I eventually moved to Los Angeles and took health and wellness into the world of television. So fast forward 20 some years and like a true Buffalonian, I moved back home for family. I was surprised that since the time of launching Holistic Health Journal, the wellness level of Western New York has done very little to improve. Out of 62 counties in the state of New York, Erie County ranks number 56. My guest today is a man who spent the last three decades as a wellness warrior in our fine town and is passionate about bringing greater levels of awareness to healthy living in Western New York. He's a personal hero of mine as he's dedicated his life 
to increasing our levels of awareness in the realms of health and wellness. And that brings us to our guest today, Phil Habistro, the Executive Director of the Wellness Institute here in Buffalo, New York. Welcome to the show, Phil. Catherine, it's great to be here. Thank hey. you. How did you find your way into the realms of health and wellness? What was your journey into <clears throat> this field? Oh, I think it's pretty simple. Uh, uh, we kid people. My family mm -hmm. uh, in Buffalo, they've been here since about 1826, wow. and they were gunsmiths and brewers. So I think it was pretty natural for me to go into the health and wellness field. Uh, but mm -hmm. on the more serious side, right. uh, an athlete when I was young, uh, SUNY Brockport for college, and I studied uh, physical education, sports science there. Worked up at the college for about eight years when I came back to Buffalo. Um, went downtown, worked at the Buffalo Athletic Club, which is now a, a private club. Uh, did fitness programs for people there, Catherine. I think I did like a thousand different fitness wow. programs for people. Yeah, I was the, eventually the program director. Mm -hmm. But I left there in uh, 83 and I started my first company, a little little firm, Buffalo Fitness mm -hmm. Consulting. You know, wow. I had a business card. And, <laughs> and, uh, you were official, you had yeah. your card. Yeah. And I went out and started knocking on doors mm -hmm. with organizations in our community that um, might be interested in, and they right. didn't even call it that back then, uh, employee wellness. Right. So I went from people to organizations, and during that journey, uh, a very young, fine young friend of mine, John Giardino, who was a prominent attorney here in our community for many years, he and I were always kibitzing about how we could improve the quality of life in our community. And we decided, uh, with his help, we founded the Wellness Institute of Greater Buffalo in 1989. So um, wow. this fall, we'll be mm -hmm. celebrating our 30th anniversary. I, I would say to your viewers uh, that uh, a lot of folks don't hear about us because we do a lot of things behind the scenes, but when you ride in and out of Buffalo and you see those signs, welcome to Buffalo in all America city, that was a civic initiative that we got involved with and we helped the community to win those awards. And so um, in, in a summary sense, I now spend most of my time working at the community level. Uh, and if you look at it from a marketing standpoint, mm -hmm. the physical activity that can reach the most people and goes through the lifespan is walking. Right. So in order for us to make a strategic decision about where to focus efforts in that direction, we decided to put it on walking of Western New York walks. Right. And the idea is to go out, and, and we just held a summit this past June. Uh, we were hosted by the people at the Buffalo mm -hmm. Grand Hotel, did a wonderful job. And we brought two national speakers, one from Canada and one from the United States, to come and talk about how you can make communities more walkable, right. more walk-friendly. So that's one way to get at physical activity. If you look at the literature, um, you know, I just saw some data from New York State ranking the state relative to overweight and obesity. And right. just about six out of 10 uh, New Yorkers are either overweight or obese. So regular physical activity is one of the antidotes to help manage weight. And walking is such a simple solution because it takes so little. You don't need a whole gym set up in your house. You can no. just walk outside your door, especially when Western New York, this weather is beautiful yeah, as it and is it, now. And it, you know, you, you talk about the winter thing and, and one of the projects we're also involved in is the city of Buffalo was one of, there was 62 applicants for a major national grant, which was funded by the Robert mm -hmm. Wood Johnson Foundation. And Buffalo was one of the cities selected, three out of 62 were selected, and it's called Winter okay. Mission. And we're working with the city on that right now. Um, and the idea there, Catherine, is to increase activities in the winter months. That's but, wonderful. But also yeah. to um, reduce social isolation. That's and, and that's yeah. kind of brings you to the mental health side of, of what we do. Right. That's wonderful. I know even here in the mall where we are, the Eastern Hills Mall, it's all winter long we have mall walk walkers. It's yeah. so simple yeah. just to go somewhere and... <laughs> Well, I, 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 I heat it inside I, and, I give, I give you and a, take a little, little walk. Little, little fun point, you know, uh, a lot of the work I do is public policy, and so I used to follow Robin Schiminger around the mall over at, oh, that's uh, great. at the <laughs> other place. Uh, he and I are classmates mm -hmm. from O'Hara, but uh, it's one way to meet people, and, and there's a social side to that, that's too. True. 
Well, I want to talk a little bit more about the wellness level of Western New York as soon as we get back from this break. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Phil, there are very few things you loved more than your chocolate chip cookies, talking about dogs, and creating a team of Irish people. Um, but one thing you did love more than those was connecting people and building social capital in our community. You made Western New York and the world a healthier, happier place. And you are missed and you are loved. Phil Habistro was my friend. We met at the Buffalo Athletic Club. He was my mentor. Uh, we worked on complete streets legislation on the Buffalo Common Council. He was my partner uh, with the Healthy District Initiative and of course with the Clerks Wellness Collaborative. Uh, he was an advocate for change for the community. He saved lives on a daily basis. And as Phil would always say, be well, my friend. I love you, bud. Hey, Senator Tim Kennedy here. Just wanted to take the opportunity to recognize Phil Havistro for his contributions to our community over so many years. We are certainly going to miss Phil. We are forever indebted to him and everything that he has done for all of us in our community. Uh, we will truly miss him. And my deepest condolences to his entire family during this very difficult and trying time. Our thoughts and prayers are certainly with you.